Hi everyone, Jean Larson here. This week I want to talk about what format you should think about using when painting particular subjects. For instance, just to give you a little example, I had demonstrated a couple of weeks ago how to do this desert scene and afterwards I thought to myself, well, since it was just a demonstration piece, what I'd really like to do is take this subject and do it on a much wider, narrower uh, piece of watercolor paper. And I think that will actually make it much more effective. So when you think about what subject you're going to paint, Think also about the shape and format that you're going to use, whether it's going to be horizontal, vertical, narrow, um, horizontal, narrow, vertical. Certain subjects will be more effective if you think about that before painting. For instance, I did this little painting also uh, many years ago, and I felt that I could have done this narrow and long, and it would have been way more effective. Um, I had also painted um, my local Mount Tam. Basically, I was, I was looking at getting a textural effect, but I think this would have also been more effective in a long, narrow uh, painting, which uh, could have been more dramatic. It's important to think of that, about that before you start painting. I'm just going to do a little doodle um, on a lo long, narrow, a piece of watercolor paper and I'm going to just use some blue appetite genuine maybe even come down further with the sky this is a total experiment I'm taking my sepia ink I'm gonna give it a good shake and going to try something different today. I love textures as you know and I just want to do total experiment. And I'm going to take my take brush with some water See, that's the, the, this is the, for me, this is the type of thing that I would like a long, narrow, even longer than this, maybe, uh, piece of paper for. And I'm going to let this dry, and then I may decide to add some color down here. But this is just a doodle. I encourage you to do this. Just take some scrap watercolor paper. I often have little pieces like this. Uh, think about color, shape and your composition of the subject that you're going to paint. These are all things to take into account when you plan a painting. So we'll let this dry and I'll take another look at it. So now that it's dry, I'm going to spritz the bottom here a little bit. And I'm gonna take a, cre a credit card that I cut into a narrow strip and I'm going to take some permanent brown by Daniel Smith. And I'm just putting a little bit on the um, back of the credit card. And I'm going to scrape it into the wet area. And I also want to add some blue in here, bring some of the sky down into the bottom area. And I don't like that big blob there, so I'm going to get some movement going. And maybe I can scrape some texture into this and um, I'm not going to do too much I just want a little more blue here not too dark just to carry through 
that sky area. What I may do here is go back with my um, sepia ink and just tie the two areas together a little more. You can get carried away with this and do way too much. Just messing around, experimenting. It's a lot of fun. And I've got this long shape, which I kind of like. I could do this even longer and it would be even more effective, I think. So this is how I come up with ideas for larger paintings. It's just experiment, experiment, experiment. And I encourage you to do the same. The more you experiment, the more experienced you're going to become and know your medium, know your materials. Just remember that I always list the materials I've used below the video. Just click on show more or on your mobile device, click the down arrow. So I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time.